My buddy John Nelson sure does love his vignettes. There's rarely a project that he's working on where he doesn't throw a vignette into the mix. Even snuck one into his Firefly imagery base map. I've seen that map hundreds of times, but it wasn't until he told me the other day that I actually noticed it. He's so sneaky. How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the Carter Redux channel. My name's Tommy. And in this video, which is part two of a three-part series on making Shaded Relief base map, we're gonna turn up the complexity a bit with this one. Now, I mentioned vignettes because, well, yes, we're gonna be adding a vignette to our map to add some additional visual interest, but also to serve a very important function. Now, why vignettes, you might ask? Um, me, personally, I just really like how it sort of blurs the lines between your map and the rest of the stuff around your map that feathering of the hard edges of your composition, I find really appealing. It's also a great technique for focusing attention on the desired subject of your map in a very subtle and soft way. How do we actually do this inside ArcGIS Pro in an efficient way? Well, let me show you. So we've got our map, but I'm actually gonna open up a layout. Now this layout is set to 810 by 810 points, which corresponds to 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. And we've got our map frame centered here. Now for our vignette, if you've watched any of John's videos before, you've seen him rip through this. So he starts with just a plain old rectangle. And if we look at our symbol properties, we're gonna change that solid fill to a gradient fill. Now that's not enough. You actually have to get in here and start mucking around with these, these properties in here. And we can change one to be completely transparent, but you've got this really linear uh, effect that's taking place. And honestly, what you want to accomplish is something a bit more stark. We actually wanna have a little bit more steep fall off of that gradient along that curve, right? We want to use circular, we want to use continuous, so it actually has that nice smooth curve to it. And me personally, I like to start with 100% for the size. And then I'll go in and actually start tweaking the color scheme. Now, these stops along here can kind of bend your brain a little bit. So I created this graphic. Hopefully it's a little bit helpful. Um, but for me, this was seeing it laid out this way made a lot more sense, especially as I was tweaking and fine tuning those stops and the specific transparency values for those stops. So if you're familiar with like keyframe animation or, um, or things like that, I wanted to ease that curve a little bit instead of that stark, uh, that, that really steep drop off. I wanted to have a steep curve, but having just a little bit of easing in and out uh, of those values just really adds to that nice feathering effect. So we've got our stop set up. We've got our gradient set up. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Just kidding. I know it's hidden on you. So we're actually going to turn on a, another fill layer just to kind of show you what that, that gradient looks like. So you can actually see that feathering that's taking place, that subtle transition from completely transparent over here to completely opaque white along the edges. Now that edge is really important. That's why we had that really thick range of completely opaque from the zero to I believe the 30% 30, uh, 30 position. So from a positioning perspective, again, I want this on the outskirts of my image. I want my focus area somewhat in the center of it. And we'll add some additional uh, components to the map to, to bring that a little bit more to life. So we've got our vignette set up. Now it's time to actually make it something usable outside of just our layout. So we'll turn off this rectangle and I'll flip over to this final version over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my map frame on, but I'm gonna hold down control and left click and turn off all the layers. So now all I've got is just my vignette. Don't believe me? There it is. Next, we wanna export our vignette. Now typically what folks will do with their map exports is create a PDF, but you can also create a TIFF. And specifically, we're gonna create a GeoTIFF. Now this magical thing has actually got that spatial life already breathed into it. There's not gonna be any need for geo-referencing it. And it's actually going to be precisely where we placed it. So let's turn our layers back on. All right, so that's why it's very important to set your map up in a very specific way, exactly where you want your vignette to land. Turn those back off. 
Let's talk about some other parameters here. Now, transparency is important. So we want to make sure that we have transparent background selected. We'll use just the default LZW compression. Don't get too crazy with DPI. I was noticing some, uh, some flakiness when you start pushing it uh, more than say like 600. So 300 I found was a good balance between enough resolution and actually able to cache. Now, additionally, we're going to want to write the GeoTIFF tags. This is all that spatial information, that geo-referencing information that it's going to be hard coded into the DNA of that TIFF file. Where is it going to get that spatial reference from? It's going to get it from our map frame. And then for our color depth, we also want to make sure that it's 32 bit with alpha. That alpha is the special part because that's actually what's going to help retain that transparency aspect. And let's just make sure that it's going to the right location. And it is. So we'll click export. You know what, let's take a look at that file. There it is, it's done. And we even get a little preview of it. So the transparency is there. So let's flip over to another map and let's bring that vignette in. Add that to the current map. And there we go. So now it's actually part of our map, not just our layout, which is really cool. And you can zoom in and out on it. The gradient is fixed. It's not moving around on us. And that's fantastic. Let's talk a little bit about the background terrain that I've got here. Just got a single raster data set, my USGS National Elevation data set, a NED. I believe this is the 10 meter NED. And I've already applied a hillshade raster function to it, but I've gone ahead and tweaked the color ramp so that it's a little bit more soft, a little bit more subtle, not, not as stark and eye, eye grabbing. Again, just wanted to give enough context for our focused area for the actual subject of our map. And I'll have this updated style available for download. I'll have a link to that in the description below. Now, I was noticing though that even with just a hillshade with a specified color ramp, I just wasn't getting enough of those, those dark shadows. So taking another page out of John's book was I just duplicated the layer and brought in some layer blend modes. This time, playing around with the pin light layer blend and pairing that with a 65% transparency just gives it just a little bit extra pop. So you can see the shadows just sort of are heightened just a smidge, just to give it a little bit more crispness. I really like that. Now, the last part that we need for this is we've got to figure out how to mask around this, this vignette. So for that, I just took a simple polygon, I punched a hole in it, turn off the vignette. I just punched a rectangular hole in it, fill it with the vignette that's it this is really coming along and, and i like it a lot there's just something else this map needs but that's gonna have to wait until the next video in this series the last and final video in this series so stay tuned for that i'll tell you what if you like these videos go ahead and hit that like button and uh and comment down below too especially if you've got questions or if there's something that i glossed over that or i went too quickly let me know well folks that's gonna do it for now take care i'll see you real soon See ya.